was in Pontifact. So the father is not 1804, the father is 1770. Um, so, so in the names? James Sway. They're all James Sway. I got a brother, James Sway. He's got a son, James Sway. Okay. And the Thwaite has. goes on. Oh. Mm -hmm. And the Thwaite House is still in England. Because when we Kathy were, and I were there, we saw it. Yes, you did. Okay. The, 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 original, the original Thwaites came from the Lake Country, the Lake District. They were, they were known, what is known as as close as you can be to be an original original native. They were well spelled. This is actually Tiernell, Tiernell Hall? Yes. Yes, and actually the interesting Oh, I'd love to take a picture of that one. Um, I, was, I visited there in the early 80s um, because my grandmother had told me that this was the home place, right? He rented that. Well, he never, yeah, because I went to the library and researched, he never owned it. Um, and you, 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 you couldn't tell. At that point in time, it looked like it might have been tenant farmers. But he, he, this, his name was never on a deed for this place. Um, and that's what I could find out by looking at the library. And I actually went there, and it was there. It was in pretty much a state of disrepair. Mm -hmm. you know, was that, that was, large? Huh? That large? Yeah, it was it a big large. It, it was, was built in 1640. <laughs> I, I know who built it, but I can't remember. Now, Kathy and I saw that, and it is still yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, in the early 80s, was, when were you there? Oh, don't ask me that. <laughs> and what, what did you call it? It's T Y E R S A L L, I think. Yeah, okay. with one L at the end, I think. And how do you pronounce that? Tiracel? It was actually spelled two different ways depending upon when you looked in the in the like in the direct record. One of them was T Y Tiernell, T Y N E R S A L, and the other one was an N A L. Tiersal or Tiernell. Okay, so Let's let's go back to where we were about the English. All right, so they jump on the ship. Uh, uh, James brings his brother Joshua with him. Joshua is 25 years old. He's got four children with him. Yes. Uh, he, he comes with his four children. Uh, Edward being the oldest at 11 years old. Uh, Amelia, uh, Marianne. Um, Oh, I can't remember the other. How about the wife? Lucy. Uh, Marianne too. T E W. In in uh, Pont Pontefract, there is a school called the Ackworth School, and the Ackworth School is a Quaker school. Uh, the Thwaites side, there, there there was one side. Well, you got it. I, I sent it to you. There's one side that was Quaker and one side that was not Quaker, and the ones that were not Quaker stayed behind Lake on Lake Summerwater, and the ones that uh, were Quaker eventually began to move because they were not of the oldest son. And the oldest son, the oldest son gets everything. The rest of them have to go and develop a trade so they move into the smaller towns or the bigger towns and but James Wade died in the year that he died uh, senior 1770 I call him he, uh, it's when the family the, the son's family left America and uh, they were farmers the dad was um, he was in the uh, he was a a, a kind of a, a gentry form, uh, a yeoman or, or gen, uh, what's the other term? Uh, gen, uh, not a gentleman. What is it? Uh, anyway, it means that you, you, you your income is not dependent on your labor. That you get rental fees and other things. Yeah, you're a professional. Uh, 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 I, I think I prefer it more to manual labor. Anyway, you have a status in life <laughs> in England. So why, why James chose to leave the same time his dad died, I, I, I can't figure out. It's a mystery to me. And, and he became an, an orchardist, and I don't know why that happened when, if he was a farmer before that. But they were, uh, the old, elder James was a woolen, was in the woolen trade. 
So they had sheep? They were in wool? Well, that, that whole area, Wensleydale, is full of sheep. Okay. And uh, Raydale, Wensleydale, North Abbey. It's, it's very uh, similar to the Yorkshire Dales. Um, Can you hear? There's sheep everywhere. It's like apples were here. They're yeah. just everybody had sheep. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem is that they have these uh, quarters on how many animals you can have on common land. Yeah. So you really can't. Um, Give yourself a hundred cows, let's say, because you don't have any, your 10 or 15 acres wouldn't support it. You couldn't rent it from somebody else, probably. So this is really kind of subsistence living. Well, what did he do for a living? I know. Well, well you, had to do, you had to, depending on the cows or the sheep, you had to get into woolen trays, maybe. But he was he had a trust or something he did he the he rented land or he had money other than his trade right Okay now, had, you ever, had you ever heard of James that would be who James Tweet that would be That's who he's That's talking, talking about, about. Okay. okay in England before yeah. he came over yeah, in England. But anyway, here's the story that, that came out of uh, out of the western part of England, okay. in, in, uh, west of uh, in Cumbria. Uh, they were down in Milam, which is down very. I'm talking about 16, 15, 1400, maybe earlier. And they moved on up, and they moved east through Wensleydale, and then they came down towards uh, maybe Nottingham. And they, when the war broke out, the Civil War broke out. They became supporters of the Crown, and they had a battle with the Parliamentarians, and the Parliamentarians uh, prevailed, and they scattered, and one of the three ran for the hills, and he ran back, and he escaped to where the other three, the ancient three, had been. And so our family is, tra is traced from that event. Uh, for several hundred years in uh, around Lake Simmerwater, S A M E R W A T E R. One of the largest uh, little lakes. Uh, in, in, in well, you have really done a lot of research to the English part of this family. Well, I did because all of our, that's just found in my family, all have come from England. Uh -huh. Except we have, we have a, Sw a Swiss and uh, some from Grenoble, uh, 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 anyway, so they get into uh, Philadelphia and they make their way uh, west. And they make their way to what we think is Steubenville. Where Ohio, right? Steubenville, Ohio, where they apparently have a, a land lottery kind of thing going on. And uh, he buys his first land in 1843. And I've got the deed abstracts and all that. Mm. But he acquired up to 365 acres at one point. And then after 18 years, uh, John was born by that time, uh, they go west. <laughs> to, uh, what, did they go to Oskaloosa, Iowa? Oskaloosa, yeah. Oskaloosa, Iowa. Haskell County. Okay. And Edward went up a few, uh, north into uh, Sugar, uh, Sugar Creek, Iowa. And uh, I can power sheet, power sheet County. But in actuality, they, they weren't more than 10 or 12 miles away. What prompted their move? Do you have any idea? I have no idea. Was it the, uh, uh, the Civil War? The, trees. the Civil War, perhaps? Uh, that's my suspicion. Is it about that time? Uh, no. Uh, it, when the, yes, when they go to Iowa, it is. It's uh, two weeks before Fort Sumter. So I, I, and it was a whole Quaker settlement that went there, correct? Uh, I, I don't know. But That's they, what I have heard. I thought they went to a Quaker. No, they were Quakers, but they all moved together. Did you think that? Well, the family stayed together the whole time, and, and I think they had some others. And when they got out to... Um, when they got into Guernsey County uh, early in Ohio, uh, the girls started, uh, I wonder why the girls weren't marrying off, because typically that happens, and I thought that maybe the Quaker inventory of males was low. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably, probably a very good reason. Yeah. And the worry is that John 
mean, the, the James was, was about, and I mean, he studied that way very well. And I have to find now. And, uh, and the cemetery there. So, but my Edward, uh, uh, his wife, uh, Kazea, was not approved. And so he gets disowned. He was disowned from the Quaker? Uh -huh. I'm still here. Oh, from the All of them eventually were. <laughs> From the Quaker meeting. From the Quaker uh, religion. Yeah, right. Okay. Because she was a Protestant? All was met and uh, decided whether or not the wife was suitable for him. And they said no. Yeah, so he says yes anyway. Yeah. He goes ahead with that choice. Now, there is a big Mount Hee room with the way mm -hmm. in the cemetery downtown. Where it says wait. Yes. Um, I, I was, I was yeah. 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 I, 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 I was thinking of. Um, I Can you turn the music down just a little bit? Diana, earlier did. Yeah. Uh, the message uh, got a relative there too. And his mm -hmm. name is uh, General Robert yeah. Daniel Robert. Hey, how are you? Who was, uh, who was around in order to, he did the Articles of Confederation. He's one of the family. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. He signed. Double race to go there. He signed it. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So do you, after they were in Oskaloosa, how long were they there? And, and I heard that they came back here after the war. Uh, well, about, came five, here about after five the years after the war, they bought into Florida and here. And they grew uh, oranges I, I down there? That, that, that he bought here in 1770. No, he, they, they uh, didn't buy here till, till 1850. I mean, 18, I meant 18. Yeah, excuse. I think it was about eight, I mean, 1870 or something right after the war. But I well, haven't looked up the deed here. Me something I'm trying to find out. Because I, I can't, I can't myself, I'm not a, a real uh, in depth person, uh, genealogy. This, this one says 1876. That, that's good. I, I agree with that one. And the reason, and the reason, yeah, we got a number now. Yeah. The reason is that, that, that he, married, he married his last uh, uh, children in uh, Ohio. Okay. <laughs> but, but but his wife already, died in Ohio. He owned land in Florida. <laughs> okay. But his wife passed away in 1856. In in uh, New Smyrna, Ohio. Now, see, I can't make that connection. Why do you? What do you have that says New Smyrna? Uh, probably ancestry.com. This is Samara. I have 1880 is when. That's one source says when he purchased this grave. That's what I was, The man's name was B-O-H-E-R. It must have been just property right around here. Yeah, no, it literally is. It's like right here. He yeah. starts with, I think it was like 180 acres or something on this side of the road, and then he buys some over there. So then he begins to amass more. Of course, the road was And who did he point. buy it from? Bohr, B-O-H-R? Because I haven't done any research on the deeds. You don't have see. a copy or yeah. here. Yeah. No, actually, I don't have a copy. Dang. I have a copy or next door. Dang. I can go oh, use it, yeah, Emily. It's really good for him uh, to have clearing. 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 Okay, we'll, we'll do that there. when we're finished. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. For country, we're in Norris. We're, uh, yeah. the North, we're from Norris. Our ancestors were Norwegian and not Danes. So they came from the west and not from the east of England. So Edward's family went to Florida? Uh, Edward and Jane's family, according to the record I have, went to Florida. Father and son, and John. Well, they well, they stayed Maybe here. And yeah, they they somehow ended up here, and I was told after the war they came here, and the Quakers uh, were really into trying to educate the freed slaves. Mm -hmm. That I got that somewhere, but also I had a freight contact me via Ancestry and said, I think you're related to us. We were in Florida, and my um, great grandfather, grandfather, whatever grew oranges yeah, so you're, and you're, for you're you talking, all to grow apples and for them to grow oranges it was kind of crazy you're talking to either Sarah Spredner or Margaret Bird who are my first cousin okay I haven't done that in a while
Yeah, yeah Edward went to Florida in the, 70, in the 1870s. And my question was, since James was on the record as being a resident of Florida in, in, seven, in 1870, when he bought the 40 acres, when did he move to Florida? Or was the record, in fact, not correct? That he was not a resident of Florida. So what part of Florida? Gainesville. Okay. Alachua County. Okay. But, Diane, you don't have any record of our James they being they in Florida. Built a downtown no, Gainesville no, right on his land. Okay. I think that maybe it was a son of Edward named James or something. You know, in other words, James dies relatively. He dies in 1887. Um, and then John is the one who really picks up the ball here. And so it's like that's you just hear about John. I think it worked for out east west. My question, my question is, of you all, if you can help me. And maybe even north. I think that James was a very special man. Yeah, I think one of the big schools is Because I can't figure out why John would have, would have lived with him for 31 years before he lived without a belt. Because mom wouldn't lift her. Unless... That man was a special man. Well, and that, that's just what I'm trying to. You remember? Greg. Well, help me understand maybe more about how the Quaker <coughs> religion <coughs> family would have worked. So Edward marries somebody oh, who's not acceptable. So he's sort of he's over there. Right. And then you've got James, who's the well, next eldest, and then there's John. So would James have been the heir appointed that Edward stepped out? I mean, you know. Well. No, because Grandma, the Quakers didn't. Uh, uh, the country of England governed that, not the religion. She was a main lady. But now James is in America, and that's what I'm wondering. It's like now Edward has decided he's done something but that's connected, you know? And so it's like now from James's point of view, does he leave? Inheritance mostly to his son James, or is he adopted the new way of thinking? Well, I, well I, I think he set John up in, in, in Winchester and he set Edward up in you know, Lazarus County. That's sort of what it sounds like. Yeah, and that's James, what I think. You made a success of it, and we had a failure, but it was due to a. Uh, but if he, but if he set those two up, he would set James up too, right? Yeah, but there was James that that came on the boat. There was another James, or it was John. James, eighteen oh four, had a son, James. Okay. Yeah, his, his name was James T. Yeah. Now, that's why I pointed out. That's that incorrect. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we'll fix that. Um, so, because I really don't know what happened. But you know what? What? What I thought about this whole thing was that they came here. Um, after the war, for whatever reason, because of all the Osca Oskaloosa Quakers came back. Like they'd gone there to hide during the war or whatever, stay neutral. And they came back. But did you ever hear that uh, the James was uh, like a leader in the Quaker? Because, see, we have all the Quaker doc, we have all the Quaker books here that show every all the marriages and all that stuff. And I've gone through all those research in James yeah, and John Thwaite. But he wasn't like a pastor or a minister. I think he was. I, I, I just think that James 1804 was a, a terrific man for his time. And he kept his family together and, and uh, made, uh, made them... Uh, why wouldn't Edward move on a, a separate life? He didn't. He followed his dad, but not in the household. He just, he just moved next to him. Mm -hmm. and, a while, and for a while, he was living on his dad's land. He didn't own it, but then later on, he did own some land. But he did not own land when he was in Iowa when his dad did. So they were there for, in Iowa just for how many years? Just for six, for six years or something? They were in Iowa for just six years? Or? Um, 1863 was the last real estate sold in Guernsey County. 1861 was the first. Okay. Then they moved to. Out. Okay. He was in Florida. Okay, so they weren't there very long. So maybe that's why uh, Edward didn't actually buy anything, or they knew it was just to. They were hoping to ride the war out 
in a neutral area. Can you hear what happened? So Edward knows there's a frost coming, and he's in oranges, right? So Charlie says he goes to the bank to withdraw a bunch of money to hold them over during what's coming up to be a tough time. Well, he gets mugged, essentially. He gets beaten and robbed, and he dies of the injuries as a result of that. <gasps> oh, my it Lord. It took a few months, but he died. He never, he never recovered. So, so that put them in a world of hurt. Lord, German? <laughs> So then, <laughs> uh, if you're interested in his family, I can send you that. Um, well, so what happened in our family? So James and John come here. James dies. Um, John moves forward. Apple industry is 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 established, and everybody is in it because the money is good, and we have a very good climate for growing. Um, fruit. And at that point in time, there were also favorable tariffs with England, so the export market was huge. So they were exporting a lot of fruit. As life goes on, John has three children, two girls and a boy. Um, the boy follows in his footsteps. Um, as the apple industry continues to grow, they need to find, they begin to find uses for the leftovers that don't get shipped. They, therefore, enter things like the cider, um, the, the Senator Cider Company. They also, he, Fred, J. Fred, John Fred was also part of uh, starting a chemical company, you know, because it, there was actually some people in our area, like in the early 20s, which were really instrumental in the science of, of spraying and actually protecting the crop. And so, um, dad was a chemical engineer. Right, and so, so um, he knew all about that too. And yeah, and so Uncle Fred helped create Schindler Cider Company, something called it was Green Chemical Company. He was also one of the um, uh, founders of a bank in the area. Very connected. Unfortunately, um, I don't really know why, but he develops di diabetes, and um, basically his leg. Gets this is J. Fred, the son. Yeah. yeah. And this he, is. He built. There was a brick house across the street, so of course, you know, right here, no road there, family property. Well, there's probably a little. Road. His mother was still living. My great grandmother was living in this house when he built okay. that house. So when his leg was going to be amputated, he was on his second wife. He had divorced, divorced from the first. Second wife was there. Something happened. Somehow somebody gave him a gun and he killed himself. In that home because he didn't, I mean, what we always heard is he didn't want to, you know, have his leg amputated. Um, yeah. But yeah, and that sort of put an end for, there was a, a hiatus, there was a bit of stop in the uh -huh. Apple industry because things got sold. Now, that's the point I want to make. So your dad's in college. So dad's, dad's in college. He goes away or he's in college. He goes to Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He had been interested in mining and very, he was a science kind of guy. He goes to MIT, um, and then the war comes. Well, mom can probably tell you this better than others. It's like he gets a, um, a master's degree in chemical engineering, so partly because of interest, I think, and partly because this is my of father, the father boy getting Charles back. Robert Solenberger, um, we're so talking about. He finishes all that, and he comes back, and he works for about six months in a lab somewhere down toward Atlantic Asia. Research. Atlantic. He's like, no, I'm not going to do this. So he comes back home and takes over the approximate 100 acres of apples that his father owns, but somebody else is running. Because his father is more interested in, he's like the closet engineer. You know, he never got training in that, but always was, you know, tinkering and stuff. Hardware. Um, so anyway, dad comes back, takes over that 100 acres, and grows it from there. That was in 19... 58 or so. Um, I was born in 59 and life rolls from there. And so then dad built that all up and recently we've gone through, I kept the cap and toy, recently we've gone through um, a transition because the, the profitability of what he did is not there any longer. Um, and plus that along with some estate planning, it was just like, okay, it's time to like split things up. Well, tell about the success of Fruit Hill Orchard. That's what it was, the name of the farm where my grandparents bought from the McCanns, where Diane lives now, uh, the, hundred, the first hundred acres. It was, um, what was I going to say about it? <laughs> anyway, it, 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 was, it was just a little hundred acres. Dad built it up, and at one point we were number seven in the nation 
for apple production. And one of our last big booms was we had 1.7 million bushels we harvested. And it all went to national fruit or processing. So we didn't do any shipping in barrels over to England and you know so it was more of a processing business and then when China came on board it just kind of sunk all the uh, the processing apples but last year we had a good year but we have done this tax-free reorg and all three of us girls dad said three strikes and he was out he wanted a boy <laughs> It's really shifted. Um, yeah, I'm sure. It's some, I'm sure at one point there wasn't did, but life has changed significantly. And over, golly, I mean, the best gauge I have because I don't know the total numbers is there's an organization called Frederick County Fruit Growers, which is a basically labor organization. We need to have to have um, When I came back and started working on the orchard in the 80s, there were 42 members. There are about 12 members now, and maybe six are active and the acreage has shrunk significantly um, and there's only two people who are currently in what I would call um, fresh fruit um, and almost everybody around here grows in what's called semi-dwarf trees not the truly dwarf and stuff simply because the cost per acre you know it's just really difficult to and there's um yeah so I mean all in all over Virginia everything shrunk but yes we and nationally too and now it's tourism. You know, we had that swim, you know, a lot of it's in the Yeah. Said, here I am. They came over the swim. They jumped in the pool. I didn't think they find out what time it was. I had a coffin. What was going on? Well, they, they started. Yeah. Can you get that? Yeah. You want a side or something? Uh, I might get some water here. Okay. We can get you that. No, no, no. no. It's, it's worth that low. Well, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Because the But we did have a good year last year in the apple industry. The prices were up, and we were just really glad that you know we held on to uh, quite a bit of our orchards because we were losing money growing apples. But last year was profitable. So I know glad, Dad's glad about that, aren't you, Dad? About time. But what Dad did was he would buy an orchard and uh, you know run that orchard and the crop from that orchard a lot of times would pay for that property or close to it you know so then he he didn't have fancy cars he had a really nice house and everything but I had food order I didn't need to have cars and so he didn't you know he he invested all of the money back into the business so that's why. At one point, we, point we had 4,500 acres here in Frederick County. Not that many in apples, but you know what was maybe 2,700 acres in apples at one point. Yeah, we just sold 20 acres. Yeah. Million seven. Acres we had was variable. Should we take a contribution up for you tonight? Yeah. I think Barbara has that. But Kathy, you have that one. Don't you? 2.9 million. 2.9? Yeah. I started thinking about all the pressure based on what I can tell from uh, Google Maps. Uh, that you all were right uh, into the, the area of expansion out of uh, Jefferson and somebody wanted your land and they didn't, it didn't want you to keep apples and you probably were confronted with zoning situations uh, pretty regularly. Well, we have, thank God, we have a really good, uh, you know, a, a program for agriculture so you do get a tax break you know for land use as long as you're growing something or you have a like a woods you're you're managing that and you have a plan uh, as long as you do that you get a tax break what we've given you have to keep it in agriculture for two years 
Yes, we ha we have to keep our we want to keep our orchards going at least for two years because the IRS doesn't like you to do a tax free reorg and get out of the growing business. Well, when do you start? Because you all have a lot of development land too. That's yeah, we're we're trying to hold off of the development, aren't we, Diane? Um, well, yeah, essentially because the tax free reorganization, yeah. you need to be filing a farm use tax return for a couple of years. Yeah. In my case, I'm going to be sort of split. I mean, it's like, yeah, I'm going to continue to raise apples as long as I'm probably alive. Yeah. But being realistic, you're probably going to be in the real estate business too, because we just don't use the land. Um, you know, I'm not going to have 3,000 acres of apples like yeah, that. Yeah, you're not, you're not, are you planting any apple trees now? Yeah, a few, uh-huh. But Where basi back? basically, we'll ha you know, we had 17 years cicada last year. So this is the first year I've planted anything in three years because those little bugs just wreak havoc with wood that's like about this big. What does? The 17, year cicada, the 17 year locust. They, we know they, about that. The, female, <laughs> the female lays eggs by, like, basically, we call it stitching, but she makes about five little inserts. She just slices it and lays eggs in it. And things from about this big to maybe this big. And so if you have a baby tree that the, the trunk is, like, just planted, the whole tree's gone. <laughs> it's just going to break off because it's like, you know, the females do that. So it doesn't make sense to plant during a cicada year nor the year prior. So this year, yes, I put a few trees in the ground for the first time in a while. What's a few? Um, thousand, fifty. Well, this is because I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Well, do you have anything to say about what's going on? I'm not, I'm listening to what's going on. Because he's a farmer. Yes. He's yes. farmed all his life. And you know the trials of a farmer. I know the trials of a farmer. I'm living in the same house I lived in 87 years ago. Oh, wow. Well, we lease a lot of our land to farms. Yeah, I'm a little bit over there. You eat apples every day, too. I don't have an apple. I had an apple tree and it died two years ago. Uh, <laughs> my grandfather, my grandfather's toy had apple trees and oatmeal every day. But he didn't grow apples. An apple a day is good for you. Where did I come from? It's Mama. Indiana. I grew up in Indiana. Oh, okay. Also, now what was your Oh, my, my dad worked at a factory, but and we, and we only had five acres in our in our. But we had two two cows. Sometimes we had all always had chickens, uh, kind of thing. Just a small, but uh, I I lived amongst farmers. Most of my grandparents were farmers. Yeah, Cordell was. Now, what was I moved house? east and never went back. Yeah, where, I mean, what is, what is, where did your parents come from? Well, uh, my name, Raider, is German. But on my mother's side, everything was Irish. And my, and my one grandmother's Irish. I'm probably three quarters Irish and uh, only a quarter German. Oh. Now, how about you? <laughs> so we can hear about everybody. <laughs> Nothing, nothing. Well, can I tell you all about my farm market? Oh, yes. I want to hear it. Real quick. Um, can he have a refill of that, Dad? Yeah, sure. Um, my daughter and I um, decided to do the homestead farm at Fruit Hill Orchard um, because, well, we wanted to keep the name Fruit Hill Orchard going. My little sister has a farm market in uh, Palmyra called Fruit Hill Orchard. Mm -hmm. It's Fruit Hill South. They grow apples down there and peaches, small orchard. And then they, they're on a low ground, so they freeze out a lot. So they now are, you know, making sure that we have a crop. So we, you know, they come up here and get peaches and apples from us. And so, what's her last name? Lenticum. Barbara Lenticum. It's on that little sh information sheet. So. Yeah. Now, do you still live? Yes, I live at the Barton House. That's where we have our wedding, the big wedding venue, the Wright Barton Farm. So this little market is at Grant. We did when we first started it. We were remodeling the little building. Another guy had rented it and made a market. 
So Emily wanted to head work there and she got her degree in uh, agribusiness marketing and management because she wanted to get into the agricultural world. Mm -hmm. My daughter, and then I have a son that's a few years younger. She's going to, she's 29 and he's going to be 26. Um, they're both helping me at the market now, but Emily and I devised the homestead farm because it was our homestead for the mm -hmm. Thwaite. We used um, oh, the you. main house as our logo. So that's what's on these little things we gave you. So that's the Thwaite house. Um, we have probably, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of Thwaite, J, J. Fred Thwaite crates mm -hmm. in one of the buildings. So every, every Thursday night we do bluegrass on the farm and we have a jam and we serve food and then out of that grew our wedding venue where we offer weddings here at the pond or in the barn at my house they get to use two rooms in the historic wright barton house to get ready and then um emily is our baker she bakes everything from scratch and we have granny's attic because granny you know <laughs> my granny was raised there and i wanted to put a windmill up and guess what dad Emily. said there used to be a windmill here and granny's car <laughs> rolled down and knocked it over so anyway we have a little windmill and we're known for our emily's sunflowers baby. emily's baby is named lorena lorena warren emily's last name is warren and yeah, she's a year and a half are you open tomorrow morning we don't open till june 8th oh. But you're welcome to go look over there. We just, we're moving our herb garden. We're doing fix-ups over there. Uncle Fred's house is going to be um, an Airbnb for our family. So that's really exciting. Aren't you excited about that, Diane? <laughs> Diane remodeled it uh, when she first had gotten married. Anyway, we're excited about that because, you know, that's a big business. And with our weddings, we can offer that Airbnb, you know. Um, so anyway. Uh huh. Right across oh, okay. the street. We're rehabbing it. It's not finished, but it was built in the 1940s, and uh, it's just really we just put new windows in it and did stuff like that. And it's been a rental, a tenant house. Where's so. Uncle Fred? What's happening to Uncle Fred's house? That's what I'm talking about. We're going to make it an Airbnb okay. rental. The brick across the street. Uh huh. So you all, if you want to, we can go. I can show you around afterwards over there, and you can look around and. Sure. I, I would hope Emily would have come over, but they went roller skating with the kids. So. Well, it's sure as interesting. It's nice that this kid go on. Life will go on. Yes. I'll think about that. Yeah. Where is it? I'm getting ahead of you. That's what she said. What do you have in that glass? Dad, what are you drinking? What's, what's what kind of cider is that, Diane? What is that, your Diane? preference there? 522. 522. 522. It's Good. black correct. That's the name of this road out here, 522. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, this has been Well, I was one of the, I had the, the full pack, and so the, the 522 was in the full pack. It was at my front door when I got home from the hospital. I told her about it. Did you send it to him, Diane? I had been in the hospital for How's, four days, and I arrived oh, home, and there's a package for me. How sweet! Oh, so are you better? I mean, were you just had? Oh, yeah. uh, I had a, I had a situation where I could not. Uh, I was gaining weight and could not lose it. And what was happening? I was retaining the fluid. Oh. And I thought I had asthma because I couldn't breathe. But and it was left-sided heart heart trouble. So they, they put you on furosemide? I, I, I lost 30 pounds in three days. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Yes. He, was a, he had left-sided heart failure, and, and now he's 50 better. In, in, in ten, uh, 10 days. Then he lost 50 pounds. From you must that. Have been pretty big at one. So now I have to. Uh, now I no, and I had an implant to. to uh, I, I'm not a, a blood thinner. I'm not blood thinner tolerant. So I had what they call Watchman uh, little insertion they put in there. Mm -hmm. There's an appendage that creates uh, the, the blood clots come out of, and it blocks that. Oh, good. So. And we had a doctor in our hospital that that he's put in a hundred. Of those. Mm -hmm. The watchmen? Yes, yes, locally. Mm -hmm. Well, Dad just had a pacemaker put in, so you all are both bionic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't defibrillate, Dad, just a pacemaker. Well, it just I, keeps I, everything ticking. I'd love to see the years that he's got. <laughs>
Well, I'm going to tell you. It'll take uh, seven to get there. Uh, this, is, this is such a treat for me to be with y'all. And um, I grew up in Baltimore. Okay. And um, my daddy was from Wilmington, Delaware, from a long line of Quakers. And when I was four, his mother moved in with us in Baltimore. Can my you Quaker. tell us your, your maiden name, yes. your full name? My, my maiden name was, a, my, I was Elizabeth Clymer Rumford, R-U-M-F-O-R-D. Okay. was my maiden name, and I was always Betsy. Okay. And um, so Grandmother Rumford moved in with us when I was four. I had an older sister, seven years older, a sister five years older, and then along came Betsy and our brother Lou, who was a year and a half younger. Anyway, so when I was four, and grandmother lived with us until she was 97, and she was quite a Quaker lady. She had, daddy was raised as a Quaker, as I said, but he and mommy were in the Episcopalian. But dad, grandmother had Quaker cousins who would pick her up every Sunday and take her in Baltimore up to the Quaker meeting. And at the dinner table, we had quite a formal um, arrangement because basically they wanted to make sure there was always someone there around for grandmother. So at the dinner table, I sat right by grandmother. And um, one night, well, I will tell you what happened. My parents would sometimes go out, so they'd leave the children with grandmother at the table, but we were really grandmother's city. But one afternoon, <laughs> Out the kitchen was a cold closet, I don't know what you call it, where you would, in the fall, I loved it because there would always be a big jug of cider, big heavy glass jug with kind of a, a handle on it. And I loved the cider. But one afternoon I got into it because it tasted really good, it was a little fizzy. <laughs> and I drank so much. By the time dinner came and our parents were not there, it was my brother, myself, and my sisters, I got, <laughs> I got drunk. I got drunk. I had drunk. I had gotten drunk, and I was under the table. My brother was misbehaving. Everything was terrible. We were just. Did you up. know what it was? No, I really. I knew it was How, How old were you? How old were you? I must have been about ten or so. I don't know because I can still remember thinking, "Oh, like this. It just tastes so good." <laughs> so, not yours is wonderful, and so. Grandmother got up and left the table. I mean, that is unheard of for Grandmother Rumford. And so anyway, I didn't quite live that down. And the next day, you know what happened? I had the worst case of hives. Oh! <laughs> From the side of Oh, I'm sure I had a headache too. I didn't have I mean, it got it was hot. just hives. I just, this was too much of the, what was ever in the side. Too much of a good thing. Oh, <laughs> That really wasn't my personality because I was usually the good one because I was that far down in the line. <laughs> so your grandmother was appalled? Oh, she was so appalled. She left the table and went upstairs. So, yes. so Mary Lou and Roger Quaker, and they used to journey some places with the Quaker church. Did you oh. go down to Baltimore? They were oh, active yeah, we in the, to the Friends yeah. meeting. And right at, yeah. And my mm -hmm. yeah, Charles Street. Yeah, would you have been there too? My grandmother yeah, would have been there. Oh, yeah, no, she was Mary no, Beatrix Tyson Rumford. We had just come back from my sister's funeral in Wilmington, Delaware yesterday for service. She literally died in October, but we couldn't all get together. We got our family of 25 together. And we've been up by winter tour the last two nights, and we have had the, the service at the Brandywine Cemetery. So you and Robert it was um, just so lovely, and that cemetery is where, James is where middle, right? generations yeah. of Canbys yeah, can, and Rockers can see, can are buried. So how here. did you all meet those so much Quakers? Well, so you Charlie was raised, me raised as a children. Methodist, oh. and I was raised um, as Episcopalian. I met Charlie at the Trust Company of Georgia. Because I ended up in Atlanta when I was in my early twenties, and then I met him at that bank, and then we dated and we got engaged very quickly. And they said one of y'all has got to leave. What are the his daddy had been very involved in the bank, and then Charlie was working with the bank for thirty years. So you had to leave. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're out of here. You went home and got married, had babies. <laughs> We have two daughters. We have an, an Emily mm -hmm. who is in her late in her forties, and she and her husband and four children live up in 
Clayton, North Carolina. Oh, okay. So we spent Monday through Thursday fixing her, and we went out to Wilmington, Delaware, back today. And then our other daughter came up with her four children. They threw out three children from Birmingham for the funeral yesterday. Oh, okay. So you got got to see them. Quakers. No, they they really are not. But it is just so interesting to talk to you. I'm the only one in my family. So do you and Betsy have children? Yes, I was going to show you. These are our North Carolina children we don't get to see very often. Now three uh, Birmingham children are with us this weekend. And last night they were absolutely Is there still a meeting here? We had a 26 hours, I think. We had two Quaker meetings. The executor said the night on her. Roger, my husband and I was at the Which is downtown Winchester. Now, Hopewell, etc. Because we, there are not that many Quakers around. No, I know it, there are very few and far between. I mean, they're all very few Quakers. Didn't Terry Hall come up with anything? I guess you call come in. And we had two Quaker cousins coming who came in yesterday who live up in that area. I wanted to say, as children, we almost had the two generations with the older sister and my brother and myself were about you know, five or six years apart from the older girls. But Lou and I always had to say, no, well, it was our job our, 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 for our um, honor to say the blessing, which was a Quaker blessing. And it was thank thee for the world so sweet. Thank thee for the food we eat. Thank thee for the birds that sing. Thank thee, God, for everything. And then we said that because Grandmother Rumford was with us. And my father, her son, you know, who lived with us, with, you know, we were very together, yeah, would always address her as, how is thee today, Mother? I'm married to know, from South Carolina. Yeah, see, when I attended meeting, my husband retired. How's thee? What's thee doing today? Do you remember your Quaker blessing? Do you remember? Was it similar to hers? Well, we, we did not say solid. She's oh, yeah. We did solid blessings. Solid blessings. We did not say anything. Yeah. Our Quaker blessings were. We're gonna have blessing. No, he grew up. I think he grew up. They don't see me very often. Let me get the other. Mennonite. Mennonite. Roger. Yeah. Was a Mennonite. But his mother. Yeah. Well, now they lived in a house that's across the road from my driveway called oh, okay. Cherry Row. 1794. And her mother, Nina Thwaite, married Schlack. What was your daddy's name? Gro Gro Grover Schlack. And they, she and Roger, her last name became Kuntz lived there and they w one time left for I'm telling the story ahead of it but you can probably tell it they left and and then her mom her sister lived across the road in a house yeah Helen they left in a snowstorm to go somewhere and they turned around and came back and their house was haunted our house really and truly I crossed my arms and tell the story when you came back in it was set up like what now we meeting a meeting at yeah, a Quaker we, meeting. Yeah, because we we you know our house <laughs> is big and, and you had the kitchen and two steps up the dining room. And we always the, the you know, had our chairs when we came back was, our uh, chairs way, were all set up. I mean we absolutely said, would hear people. Come, and then she took and pictures and, and it was all uh, wavy. Uh, more than I mean, yeah, I, absolutely. I but it, it was set up like a Quaker meeting in her house. Isn't that I mean really and truly and her sister would What's not walk through our dining room oh from the kitchen to the dining room. When no. my, my grandmother died in 97, we had a, a Quaker service in our living room, and my mother explained to us that her ashes would be on the uh, mantelpiece, but no one would say a thing unless they were moved to say something. Well, we, I attended a meeting like that. that you came in and said, you might sit for a hotel. And then that's my daddy and his brother, and they were from Baltimore. Yeah. What was their name? 
They were adopted by their aunt and uncle. Uh, the last and, so, and so we have Baltimore Connection. Yeah. Yeah. So did anything yeah. happen in the funeral or it was yeah. just a oh, quiet yeah. funeral? Oh, no. It was just quiet. Was gap and so they always said nicely. Mm -hmm. And then um, the women who helped in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
and uh, he was the apple magnet here in Winchester. Yes, we I was. Call him that. You still are. All right, we're, we are introducing ourselves now. Sorry to interrupt you, Charlie. Yes. I just need you to give me your name and a little bit of your information. We're going around. I'm going to end up the video here. Well, that'll be nice. My name is Charles Edward Thwaite III. There have been two that precede me. And I'm, uh, what else you want to know? You're just really into the genealogy of the Thwaite family? I'm the, well, I'm the oldest living Thwaite that I can determine. And oh. for that I have a And how old are you? 79. <laughs> oh, well, you're young. But, but I can call this gentleman a Thwaite, too, so yeah. I can't yeah. tell him. But he does not bear way. that name, so, yes. <laughs> no. you know. Okay. Uh, so I, I had this responsibility, I felt. To, when my dad, I went up in the family papers, and I saw when my dad had okay. written a man in New York City. I'm just going back to the Saying uh, his name was Herbert Thwaite. Yeah. He said, I do not know any Thwaite outside of my own family other than, um, uh, well, I forget the other guy's, he, Herbert Thwaite was, was communicating with him. And the guy that he knew was Milton Thwaite, thank you. And Herbert t says that Milton is my nephew and that we came from such and such. And so I gathered from that that my daddy had no idea. <laughs> and from the letters of the wedding, my daddy did nothing. He didn't even know they, where they were going to go on the honeymoon. He just wanted to, be, to do it. To be, a, to be a successful man, he, was, he didn't know where he was going on his honeymoon. So mother planned that. And uh, Five years ago. Uh, they, uh, small town in Georgia. Tell them what your daddy did. Huh? Tell them what your daddy did. He was a banker. And what is his was his name? Same as yours. Uh, Charles Edward Thwaite Jr. Okay. Uh, he was the fourth child of uh, Charles Edward Thwaite. And he was in Atlanta. Uh, they, he grew up in Macon, Georgia. Oh my gosh! You probably know some of our family. Did you ever live in Macon? Uh, I went to Macon on Sundays to see my grandmother, and I loved to see it. my grandmother and my grandpa, the greatest people. We had some cousins in Macon. Yeah, Dad's uh, cousin lives in Macon. My grandmother took her teeth out and put them in a glass every night. <laughs> her yeah. house smelled like uh, Noxzema. <laughs> That's and, true. And I can remember my granddaddy going down the steps in the morning. He had cracked oyster shells in one canister. He had cracked corn in another canister. And he had some green uh, oblong type stuff in another canister. And he poured water, warm water on that green stuff and it smelled. And then he goes out and he feeds the chickens. And then he goes around and picks up the eggs and all that. But when Sunday rolls around, he, I follow him out again like I've done every time. And he goes out and he gets his chicken. And he goes over and he rings his neck and the thing's hopping around without his head. <laughs> and that's our, that's supposed to be our lunch. <laughs> Fast food. <laughs> Fast food. <laughs> okay, now who do we have here? Rob and Trisha Boyd, uh -huh. and I was Trisha Stewart. My mother's name Helen, and she's um, daughter to Nina. Thwaite. Who's Thwaite Slack. Yes. Okay. Yes. All righty. Well, we're glad to have y'all here. And who is this? Uh, Diane Thwaite Sullenberger, Kearns now. So, yeah, by and daughter of Robert and Bessie, and Robert was daughter of Hugh Sullenberger. Son. Son, so yeah. Son, son of, of Hugh, Hugh and, and, and uh, Mary Louise Thwaite. Married, married Mary Louise Thwaite, who was son of John and Ida, John Thwaite and Ida Bell. And John All right. was son of James. And who is this? I'm Bessie Sullenberger. I'm married to Robert Sullenberger. And what do you want to know about me? Your maiden name was Smaltz, <laughs> and her, her father was the mayor of Winchester. Yes, and they had a florist shop for many years, which was run by my sister until just last year. They've been there for 92 years. Wow. And this is my mommy. Yep. <laughs> and who is this? I'll, I'll never tell. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Lou Coons. Mary Lou Coons mother was a Thwaite. And what else you want to know? And her name was? Nina. Nina Bell Thwaite. 
and we live on Apple Pie Ridge, mm -hmm. and all my life until I moved to Homewood in Newport, Maryland. Okay. And I'm 91 years old. Oh, wow. Still walking and talking. As you can tell, I'm still <laughs> talking. <laughs> and so on. And you still play cards. Still play cards. Yeah, cards is good. Keep C playing cards. cards. But er everything else. And you have two daughters. Kathy and Susan. Mm -hmm. Susan's in, in Texas. Kathy's in Florida. And uh, three grandchildren. So. All righty. Uh, very well. Well, we're so glad. And this is your sidekick. Yes. Okay, I'm Bill. Uh, and your last name? Everybody calls me Bill, but I write it William. William Miller. Okay. And uh, William Howard, and I was named after Will Howard. William Howard Taft because he was named before me. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he's a friend. I, I'm, I'm a friend of Mary Lou. I've been with her for se almost 17 years. That is hard to believe. Look at you all. How wonderful. I think you're more than friends. <laughs> I think you all are our meet? best friends. We've, we've had a close Your friendship. best friends, aren't you? We've, we've, had, a we've had a close And this is... Again, uh, I'm Phil Rader, uh -huh. and I'm no, not a part of the relative uh, family here, but I'm a very good friend. Uh, I like to think with uh, Bill and Mary Lou, and have been for almost as long as they've known each other. And you're a youngster uh, that drives them. Well, I don't know about the youngster part, but I'm the driver, <laughs> yes. That's right. Well, we're so glad you brought them down today. Oh, it's been wonderful. Well, I'm, I'm going to say goodbye with the video and go make some copies for people uh, over at Emily's house. And maybe I can convince Emily, my daughter, to come over because that's who's going to carry on is my daughter. And thank goodness I have a little grandbaby. And she is uh, full of herself. And she's born the day after my birthday. She missed my birthday by two hours. So <laughs> my daughter's like, she's just like you, Mom. <laughs> so I'm going to say goodbye. Say bye, everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye.